Okay, are we all there? Right? Okay, we'll, uh, shall we pray and get started? Okay, let's, um, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this time. We commit this, um, this time into your mighty hands, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would uh, speak to us. And even as we look into your word, Lord, I pray that your word, um, Lord, will convict us, change us. Lord, I pray that you would write your word uh, on our hearts, God. We thank you. We come at this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so I'm sure all of us are here with, uh, you know, with expectation. Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm, you know, as we look forward and um, uh, into the unknown of this semester, right? We want to look at each of these subjects and uh, we are all keen, interested in getting equipped, in getting trained and, uh, and really looking forward to all that God has for us, right? So, um, and even as we do that, we see that, you know, God has a dream for us, each one of us. And, and, and the Lord is really uh, wanting to share his heart, wanting to lead us uh, into encounters with him, right? And wanting to lead us into uh, those situations and circumstances and take us out to, to meet with people. And, and really, he wants to reveal his heart to us. Right, what he has in store for us, his plans for us, and so on. Right? So as we see in 1 Corinthians, we see that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, what is, or nor has entered into the heart of man, the things that God has planned for us. But the Holy Spirit chooses to reveal, or he wants to reveal, right, as we go along. Um, so even as God has these plans and desires for us, there are certain things that come as a barrier. Certain things that come, which hold us back, withhold us back. Okay? So all of us could say, okay, that's, I know who the number one enemy is, Satan. Right? Satan opposes the plans of God. Satan opposes God's dream for me. And, uh, you, know, my, you know, what God wants to do through me. Yes, that's true. But the fact is that Satan is a defeated foe, right? And even though he tries to intimidate and he tries to, uh, you know, uh, come between us and the plans that God has for us by discouraging us, maybe by intimidating us and so on. We see that certain times we ourselves become a wall. We ourselves become a barrier okay. by our unrenewing of our mind or the, our appetites of our flesh we ourselves oppose the plans and purposes of God for our lives. And sometimes we, when we know it, when God convicts us, it's best that we, you know, kind of discard all those things. But what if we don't know, right? We don't know. We think that we are doing the right thing. We, we you know, we are, I'm doing all that is good. But sometimes these things are very, very subtle that we could deceive ourselves, right? And the Lord Jesus, when he was introduced by John the Baptist, this is what he says, he says that, you know, there's one who's coming after me. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay? With the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is what he's going to do. He's going to burn the chaff. He's referring to fire as something that burns, refines, purifies, saying he will burn away the chaff. All that is wasteful, all that is unnecessary, he will burn away. And he's talking about the work, the baptism, the work of the Holy Spirit. So this, we're going to take some time and also, you know, in the next few days to look at some of these things that we need uh, or to allow God to deal in our own lives. Right, and uh, if you if you see um, if you look at Matthew chapter three, verses 20, ten to twelve, and you can follow in your books in your publications, page number one. Okay, all of us here, you can open up to page number one if you have those books. Right, page number one in your book. <coughs> okay, so this is what we see. Okay, let me just read Matthew chapter three, verses ten to twelve, and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water 
unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay, so who says these words? Anyone? Yeah? Don John the Baptist, right? He's saying these words. He's talking to all those people who are gathered there, and he's saying, the Lord Jesus is coming. He is mightier than I. He's worthy, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to you know, carry or touch. But he's going to do this. What is he going to do? He's going to baptize you. He's going to take you through an experience of baptizing you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is what he's going to do. He's saying, you know, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Everything that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The, the, he will burn up the chaff with, with unquenchable fire and so on. So he's talking about the purifying work, the refining work of the Holy Spirit. In whose lives? In our lives. Right? The Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to empower us, to strengthen us, to release those gifts among us. But it's also to refine us, purify us. Right? For what? For what reason? That we can actually be fruitful. That's the only reason, right? That we can truly represent Christ, right? And we are all called to represent Christ wherever we are. So he's called us to do that. Okay, so um, we're going to look at how these laying the axe, how the Lord, by the work of his spirit, lays the axe. What is an axe? Everyone? What is, it, what is an axe used for? Trees, chopping off trees, right? And uh, is it a useful tool or what? Not. Useful, right? If there's a road and then there's a tree which has fallen across the road, like it happens, like most times uh, in, in monsoon, trees fall. We need a chopper. We need an axe to chop, clear, so we can go. Sometimes these trees are there. Unnecessary. Right? These needs to be chopped. These need to be chopped. And the work of the Holy Spirit is like that chopping, right? It's not just chopping the branches or leaves, but it's chopping the root, directly at the root, right? The Holy Spirit can reach down. You know, if you, if you do with the chopper, you can actually chop just the base of the trunk, right? But the Holy Spirit can actually hit the root, his axe, is laid to the root, which means what is really causing that problem? What is causing that unfruitfulness? The Holy Spirit lays the axe to the root of it so that it can be removed and we can be fruitful. We can be effective. We can represent Christ, truly represent Christ. Okay, so we're going to look at what is the first thing, or one of the things that... Um, baptism of the Holy Spirit and what does he lay the axe to? What root does he lay the axe to? Okay, the first one is the self. Okay. Can everyone say self? Okay, so he's laying the axe to the root of self. Okay. What is the self? It is my fleshly desire. Fleshly desire for fame, personal fame, recognition, it is desire for positions of power and influence. Basically, it is a problem with I. Okay. There's some level of I problem. Okay. Most of you don't wear glasses, you've got good vision. Okay, but there's an I problem. Right? Even with people who don't wear you know, glasses, there could be an I problem. And the Lord wants to deal with that I problem. So that is what we're looking at. He deals with that. So um, when we're talking about the self, it can be very, very subtle. Very subtle. Subtle in the sense, it, it, you know, if it is something which is very, very in the face, if it is apparent, then we know, hey, this is a problem. I need to deal with it. But what if it is there and I don't even recognize it? Right? 
there's a difference between singing for the lord okay that's one scenario i'm singing unto the lord wonderfully beautifully right without any wrong notes and the other scenario is to tell you hey look at me how wonderfully i'm singing to the lord there's a difference right it's a very subtle difference and no one can notice it but it's in the heart right? me singing to the lord beautifully and me having this thing in my heart hey i want you to see me hey anand i want you to see me sing how beautifully and i want you to notice how wonderfully i'm singing to the lord i want you to notice how wonderfully i'm serving this lord you know I, how sacrificially i'm serving the lord how wonderfully you know i'm preaching how wonderfully i'm doing all these things but i want you to see me do that it's a very fine line it's very subtle right so um so we see that the lord wants to deal with the self okay um in um in in the book of exodus you know i'm at uh, i'm on page 5 if you see that scripture you know um exodus chapter 30 verses 31 to 33 now the lord gives this instruction and it's actually a recipe it's an instruction and a recipe for the anointing oil okay so there are various things that go into it and it's um, uh, in fact the verses before that Uh, talk about what goes into this anointing oil and what was this mixture or this anointing oil used for it was actually used on all the utensils and everything in the tabernacle it was anointed it was consecrated which means it was you know covered with that oil it was consecrated for a holy purpose and use okay so there were specific instructions which were given for this anointing oil okay if you look at those verses let's let's read Okay? and you shall speak to the children of israel saying this shall be a holy anointing oil through me throughout your generations it shall not be poured on man's flesh nor shall you make any other like it according to its composition it is holy and it shall be holy to you whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from uh, his people right so he's talking about the anointing oil and we know that this anointing oil represents the work the presence and the work of the holy spirit right the presence and work of the holy spirit so what is the lord saying he's saying that this presence and work of the holy spirit is unique is something that gives him glory but you cannot do something of the flesh something of your own you know something that brings you glory and attribute that to be the work of the holy spirit okay the lord is saying you shall not make anything like it you know these are all natural ingredients but it's holy unto the lord and it is represented or symbolizes that work and presence of the holy spirit so he's saying that you shall not do it so what is the th- learning there learning there is that that god will not anoint what is born of the self if there's a desire that i should be elevated and you know in all the talk and language and everything there could be you know hallelujah and praise the lord and glory to god and all that but if in the in a most desire that i should be elevated that the self should be elevated that god will not anoint that right his presence and his power and his um his joy really is not there the second thing we understand that what is born of the flesh or if we are in the flesh we cannot please god it could be a great work but if it is done in the flesh it is displeasing to god okay galatians 6 8 talks about the fact that if we sow to the flesh we will reap of the spirit no we will reap of the flesh okay now you know uh, in our home we when we wash our vessels there's water and then we we kind of want to use it for the garden right so we gather that water and then we use it for the plants we have plants there we realize that after some time suddenly there was one chili plant if we didn't plant it but then it just grew there was one tomato plant which is growing up in one of those pots 
we realized that as we were, you know, washing and cutting and everything, you know, all those seeds, it was there in the water and then we poured and then it, it was bearing fruit, right? So the Lord asked us, what are you sowing? Because if we sow to the flesh, it is of the flesh, right? If we are sowing, if we are putting those seeds, it will bear, it will bear fruit. So, you know, if the actions, if the intentions are birthed off the flesh, hey, there will be some outcome, but it will be off the flesh. It won't have God's pleasure on it. It won't have God's approval on it. It won't have the Holy Spirit's presence and anointing on it. It's of the flesh. But if we sow to the Spirit, we will reap of the Spirit. So what are we sowing? Right? What are our intentions? What are our works? Is it of the flesh or is it of the spirit? You know, is it something that elevates me? Is it something that I want to you know, bring glory to myself, even in the name of ministry? Right? So in, in Paul's time, Paul writes and he says, hey, there are some people who are preaching. Is preaching good or bad? Preaching about Christ. People are undecided. It's good, right? If we do not preach, how will people know? If they do not know, how will they understand? If they don't understand, how will they come to the saving? So preaching is good. But Paul is saying here, you know, if you look at page 6, Philippians 1, 15 to 6, 17, he says that some preach Christ from envy, jealousy. Some are preaching Christ from strife. Say, I've got a problem with you. I've got a fight with you. You know, you're a, you're a minister of God, fellow preacher. I've got a problem with you. And I'm preaching. My motivation is not that Christ will be glorified and people will be edified. But I'm preaching because I want to show you, hey, I'm a better person. That I am a better person. Right? And, uh, you know, out of envy, out of strife. And he says here, the former preached Christ from selfish ambition. So what is ambition? Ambition is a burning desire, right? You have a burning desire to achieve something. You have a burning desire to reach people. You have a burning desire that, you know, that, uh, that people will be saved. But if that burning desire is coming from a place of selfish ambition, you know, I want to be known as the person who preached the gospel to, you know, this area. I want to be known as a person who prayed and this person got healed. I want to be known as a person who, you know, who ministered and it was so wonderful. If I want to be known, I want to be recognized. Right? So after preaching the message, if people are not coming to shake hands, God, <laughs> what is happening, Lord? I just preached for 40 minutes and nobody's saying anything. They just turned and they went. <laughs> right? So if I want to be applauded, if I, you know, there's a desire there, there's a problem, right? So Paul is saying, you know, even those days, there was the same problem. It says, hey, they're preaching, but the motivation is wrong. So the Lord wants to lay an axe, the axe or the work of the Holy Spirit to the root of it. So how wonderful it will be if you're just delivered of this thing, right? People come and compliment and say, wonderful brother, you know, you do, wonderful sister, you do a great job. It's fine. You know, it's just going off. It's not, you're not meditating on it, you know, on the way back home. Oh, who all said what? <laughs> you know, that person said this thing. Ah, no, you're not meditating on your praises. You're not meditating on people's applause or compliments. But you're just giving thanks to God. God, I thank you that they were blessed and you keep going. Right? So... Um, th this is something that is um, that is very very serious because it's it does not it's not something that gives God glory. We are taking the glory for ourselves. It's not it is sowing to the flesh, and we will off the flesh reap corruption. Right. Um, so in the end, God is not glorified. He is not pleased, even though you know ministry and everything is about Him. Okay. Um, so Paul talks about several other instances also where people are doing ministry, but they are doing for the wrong reasons, for the wrong motives. Okay, okay. so how do I find out okay, if there's any, if anything wrong in our body, 
uh, what do we do? There are, there are some symptoms, right? If there is fever, then there, which means there's something, the body's fighting, and because of which the temperature is elevated, and there is fever. Right? So we find out why is there fever? So fever is not the disease. Fever is the, what is it? Fever is the symptom, right? So like that, if, if self is there, rooted deep within, what are the symptoms, right? So if you know the symptoms, then we know, hey, there's something, there's something there. This is a problem. And, uh, and, and truly, the self will manifest itself. Flesh will manifest itself. It could be subtle, but it will manifest itself. So when we know that these are some symptoms that I'm experiencing, then we realize that, hey, there is a problem and it needs to be dealt with. We invite the Holy Spirit to deal with it. Okay, so first symptom, okay, page number eight is self-promotion. Okay, you see that? Wanting to be known and liked by people. Okay, see, there's nothing wrong in, uh, you know, wanting affirmation. Right, people. I mean, you know, as human beings, we are we are built that way. We are designed that way. You know, if somebody says "good job" and we feel good, but if we live for the sole purpose of wanting to be known and liked by people, that's the self. Okay, um, you know, it, it, it's there's a there's a difference between wanting to be good and excellent in what we are doing. You know, constantly improving ourselves and, and in our ministry and doing what we're doing. There's a difference between that and desiring fame, desiring people to like us, to know us, and um, and always come and say compliment us and you know approve all that we're doing. Right? There's a difference. So that is a manifestation. Okay. Um, what did the Lord Jesus say? If you look at John chapter five and verse forty-one. The Lord says, I do not receive honor from men. I mean, during his time, there were these religious leaders and they were constantly, you know, receiving honor from one another. And they were craving that honor that comes, the respect and honor that people would give them because of what they were doing. The Lord is saying, I do not receive honor from men. Look at verse 44. He says, how can you believe who receive honor from one another but do not seek the honor that comes from the from the only god right so there is a you know there is a healthy way of respecting and honoring and receiving receiving it but if you are constantly craving and uh, if, and living for the honor and praise of people then there is a that is a symptom right so um, so the lord does not like that and approve that okay when our desire is for affirmation of men and we do not live for the affirmation of God or the accolades of God. Okay. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, this is what Paul instructs and he says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God, not to the glory of the speaker or the minister. Right? Do all to the glory of God. We're not trying to build our reputation and we're not trying to, you know, seek our praise. And, uh, you know, it's the thing is, it's very subtle, right? Especially, uh, you know, all of us have some social media account. Yeah, we're on WhatsApp, um, we're on um, social media like Instagram, Facebook. We're all there and we're all very good at taking selfies. Yes, <laughs> experts, you know, we can cover the entire thing behind and and make ourselves look good, better than how we are in real life. You know, that's what social media does, post does. And we sometimes look like, wow, this is fantastic, but the place looks very different in reality, right? So the thing is, it can be very subtle. We can promote ourselves. We can elevate ourselves. Well, the context could be ministry. The context could be serving, preaching, whatever, but uh, what is the motive? You know, is it just informing people about something or is it elevating ourselves? Okay? So that's the first symptom. It's self-promotion. The second one is selfish ambition. Okay? Selfish ambition is wanting to be known as someone who accomplished great things for God.
God. Okay. Now we have a quote. I think it's by uh, William Carey, uh, who says, uh, "Expect great things from God. Attempt great things from God. Expect great things from God." So it's a healthy thing, right? But if I if I want to be known, right? If William Carey wants to be known as someone who did great things for God, is there a problem? Yeah. Right? So that is selfish ambition and intense desire. You know, there's great drive. You're getting up in the morning. Whoa, whoa. Intense desire, energy, everything. But the motive is I should be known as someone who did great ministry. There's a subtle difference. Right? That is selfish ambition where the self is elevated. So that's a, that's a symptom here. Okay. Um, in, in, if you look at, uh, I'm on page 10, if you're following, uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Okay, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, Paul says, let nothing be done. Okay, let nothing be done. What does nothing mean? Nothing means nothing. <laughs> it's not something, it's not all things. Nothing means nothing. The list is empty. Right? So Paul is saying, let nothing be done. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Okay. So whether you want to serve, whether you want to preach, whether you want to lead in worship, whether you're, whatever you're doing, right? let nothing be done through selfish ambition. You know, to have a burning desire to do something for the Lord, to serve the Lord, is good. It's a good thing. We need to have that within us. But if the self is elevated, and that's the motive for that intense desire, then Paul is instructing us, he's saying, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, which means pride. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem better than himself let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Okay? So, so the question to ask ourselves, maybe introspect and ask is, you know, in my dreams, right, in my plans, in, um, in the vision that I have, who is the hero? Who is the hero? Like there could be a villain, there could be, you know, but to ask ourselves, who is the hero at the end of it? After this, everything is done, who finally is the hero? No, that's a very practical, simple question that we can ask ourselves. Hey, after I, I'm done this, who's the hero? Which means that my expectation will be based on that. Expectation of that act, expectation of that plan, everything, motive will be based on that. Right? I'll work towards that. So if you ask ourselves, who is the hero in this? Right? Is it God? Is it the Lord? So it's a very healthy question to ask us, a useful question. The hero is obviously, should not be us. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, the third one. Third one is self-reliance. The third symptom is self-reliance. It means that um, is to depend on ourselves instead of depending on the Holy Spirit, depending on ourselves. Uh, instead of depending on the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, Paul makes some very important statements in Philippians and also in Corinthians. Let, let's read that. You know, we're on page 12. Uh, Philippians 3 and verse 3. For we are the circumcision uh, who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay, have no confidence in the flesh or the self. Another scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Okay. So self-reliance. Uh, we need to have confidence in all that we are doing. We need to have confidence that, you know, who we are in Christ is that we are more than conquerors, that we are, you know, the righteousness of God in Christ and, and so on. But if our reliance is on our flesh or our abilities or our strength rather than on the Lord, then that is, a, that is another symptom. Okay. And also from what we see here, we see that we must learn 
to look at who people are in the spirit and not according to the flesh. Because the flesh is something which is very apparent. Abilities, skills, right? It is something that is visible. But who they are, the hidden character of their heart is something that is, that is not manifest so apparently. Right? That's, not put on, that's not put on display. So Paul is saying that we need to actually look at who people are in the spirit. Look at ourselves according to who we are on the inside. Okay. So, so he's saying that uh, we need to depend on God. We need to look at ourselves and look at others according to who they are in the spirit and not according to who they are in the flesh. So, uh, you know, we, which means that accomplishing things in ministry, uh, doing things in ministry, you know, we do it according to our, we do it by depending, relying on the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, in our day and time, there are many things that we have, many tools, many methods, yes or no, the good ones, right? We, we've been using this, uh, the projector, we've been, and online students, you know, you are, you are connected and because of technology and because of, you know, all this advancement in science and uh, all over the world and you're able to connect and we're able to, you know, learn, it's wonderful, but our reliance is on the Holy Spirit because he brings change. Our reliance is not in, in our, how articulate we are. Our reliance is not in how knowledgeable we are, uh, even you know, how knowledgeable we are about the scriptures. Our reliance is on the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Lord Jesus says, you know, he says, I am the vine, sorry, uh, and you are the branches. So he who is connected, to the vine will bear fruit. Right? Uh, let's look at that verse. John chapter 15 and verses 4 and 5. It says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. So it's not I, my strength, my ability, my learning, my expertise, which will get the job done. And even it's, if it gets the job done to some extent, the Lord counts it as nothing. Right? Because it's the Holy Spirit power, it's the Holy Spirit presence and His Word which does or brings fruit in people's life, which has permanence, which is something of eternal value, right? So the Lord is saying, without me, you can do nothing, okay? Um, okay, we looked at three symptoms, right? What are those? First one, selfish, self-promotion, right? Second one, selfish ambition, and the third one, Self-reliance. Okay. The fourth one is self-protection. Okay. Self-protection. Okay. What do we mean by that? Self-protection is when we consider our life, our reputation as something which, is, which needs to be protected at all costs, even to the extent of, the, for the uh, extent of maybe not doing what God wants us to do. Okay. Counting our life as too dear, counting our reputation as too dear. Uh, so we call it self-protection or self-preservation. Self-protection or self-preservation, which hinders, you know, which, is, which we esteem or value over and above the call of God, the will of God for us. You know, that is self-protection. And that's, that is, again, a manifestation of our self Okay, um, that's again a display. Okay, so maybe the Lord says, okay, you go and uh, you tell that person that I care for them. Okay, just tell that person. But we're all, uh, God, you know, what will the others think? What will the others think of? 
finish it for me of me what will the others think of me right the lord says okay go and tell that person that uh, you know maybe a prophetic word a word of knowledge something lord what if i heard wrong or what if people laugh at me right the lord says okay go pray lay hands and pray lord what if nothing happens and what if they laugh at <laughs> right so self protect we want to pro- protect our reputation we want to protect our life um so when we do that to the exclusion of god's will god's plan that's again a, a manifestation of the symptom of the self okay the last one is self humiliation now this might seem very contradictory to everything that we saw earlier which talks about elevation of self okay we are on page 16 page 16 right uh, everything so it talks about the elevation of self and you know uh, or popularity and fame and everything we are just putting ourselves out there here it's actually the the opposite self humiliation what does it mean it means that i feel good okay i feel good when i'm putting myself down okay so somebody comes and says brother that was a yeah that was good what you did you know that was good good work good job and you say no 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 it was not me <laughs> no it was not me actually i did a bad job uh, you know oh you know simple thing now how many of you like biryani vegetable biryani vegetarians <laughs> okay so let's say you you you're good at making biryani you know you i know it's lunch time and i don't know if you have biryani for lunch but <laughs> i don't think so but anyway so you make biryani and you give it and you you know we all come home and you sh- and we say hey, this is wonderful biryani this is fantastic biryani i mean the rice is it's so flavorsome the meat is cooked just right the vegetables are cooked right you know vegetable version vegetable everything is fine it's fantastic good job and you know most indian this is indian mentality you know it's like saying no actually you know the salt was a little less this time right or you know actually it should have been a little spicier you know mirchi mirchi thoda jyada chahiye chahiye tha you know and we kind of take pride in the fact that we put ourselves down right so the bible calls it false humility see our sufficiency to do ministry everything comes from god because we are connected to the vine right and and so you know if we are putting ourselves down if we are humiliating ourselves and in the fact you know whatever god says about us we are saying no no god i am actually less than what you say who you say i am that is actually false humility and it's actually elevation of the self right and um, you know this this can anger god this can actually annoy god like we see in the case of moses right moses initially he said okay when he was living in pharaoh's court or, or the egyptian uh, you know king's court he he actually went about and he thought okay i can do this right and then after those years in the wilderness when god comes and he has that encounter and god says moses i'm going to send you now you know i'm going to send you to the people i'm going to use you then he says oh, i can't i can't um and god has to really tell him you know i'll be with you moses i'll be with you you know uh and then he says no i i don't think and then god says okay you take aaron with you you know you take aaron with you i'll speak to you you speak to aaron and aaron will speak to the people you, you know god is like so patient he's like okay, do this but he's saying lord i can't you know he went from one extreme i can i can do all this again you know by my strength he went to the other swung to the other extreme of saying you know i can't god even if you are there i can't right self humiliation and uh, it's a pretense of humility 
maybe it's um, you know so that's also another symptom so we cl looked at five symptoms okay so what is the what is the solution you know what is this how do we deal with it uh, the deal with it uh, we see um, i'm on page 17 and it is um, we're looking at galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 okay page 17 galatians 2:20 um, Paul writes and he says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The, live, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And he says in uh, Philippians 3, what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Okay, so he's talking about all his education, experience, position, title. And he's saying, what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Okay, so he's saying, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. So the Lord, in fact, asks us to take up the cross where the I can be crucified and walk, take up the cross daily. Okay. And the cross deals with, the cross is the place of death. The cross is the place of the death of the flesh. Right. So the Lord is saying, you remind yourself, remind yourself that it is not the self. The self has to be put to death. Right. The Lord is leading us and Paul says, you know, I die daily, you know, living a crucified life. He's saying it's, it's not a one-time thing. It means that you take up the cross daily. It's a place of death. Okay. Um, so how can we make this relevant in our daily life? You know, every, day, every day is an opportunity for the eye to resurrect, for the eye to be displayed. But we make a conscious choice okay maybe you're married your you know your spouse you give up your right to be served the right to be attended the right to be heard uh, and it will help deal with the i okay. uh, when we develop the ability to give without expecting anything in return right without expecting a compliment without expecting recognition we are just serving that deals with the eye, that put to death, that put that puts to death the eye, right? The craving of the flesh. Uh, when we love without expecting anything in return, the way God, God's love is agape, unconditional. When we do that, irrespective of people's response or lack of response, that deals with the eye. Now, uh, you tell me, is it easy or difficult? What? Easy or difficult? How many of you are saying it's easy? Right. Putting to death, the death of the flesh is always difficult, right? It is painful. It is painful. But it is something that the Lord has called us to do so that we can be even more fruitful. Right? We can bear fruit so that we can represent Christ. We can be even more Christ-like. Okay? So as parents, as children, um, maybe... You know, as people who are working in ministry, um, you know, we're not competing for position, power. We're not comparing with one another and saying, you know, I need to be better than this person, right? I need to be better. I need to be more prominent. I need to be seen. I need to be heard. But we die to that. And it's a daily thing. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, so the thing to do is to, Repent. If we see any of these symptoms or if, you know, we've been studying these things, if you've noticed any of these symptoms in our own lives, it's time to repent. Right? Repent means to turn. It's, it's time to reject that. Say, Lord, I'm making a start by rejecting this. I'm making a start by repenting. And the Holy Spirit daily will enable us. He will prompt. He will show us. Hey, these are things that, that are unnecessary. These are things that I came to burn away in your life. 
right? And we expose our life to God, we expose ourselves to God and say, Lord, you work, you work in my heart, you deal with it. So uh, the Bible talks about several things, right? We, we see that Paul says, you know, let your mind be renewed and you will see transformation. Romans chapter 12, be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what is renewal? We take on the thoughts of God, the humility of Jesus, and we reject. So we take on the thoughts, we take on the instruction of scripture, we reject our own fleshly desires, we reject it, we say, oh, I'm not going to deal with it. Right? So we take on something, we reject something. And the Holy Spirit enables us. Romans 8 talks about the fact that if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So the Holy Spirit will lead us. You know, he, is, he is always there to cheer us on. Right? He's there to encourage us and he say, hey, I want you, I want, I want, I'm with you, I will lead you. So if by the Spirit, by the enabling of the Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we put to death the deeds of the body, we will live. The, the appetites of the desires of the self, when we put to death, we will live the way God wants us to live. Amen? Okay, we're going to pray and close. So, um, yeah, uh, online students also, you know, we're going to pray and close. So, you know, if you can just talk to the Lord at this time, you know, just between you and, and God, you know, and say, Lord, you know, I see these symptoms, God. These things are there, so subtle. But Lord, today I've, I've, I've seen it in your word. You open my eyes and I want to repent and reject this. I don't want this in my life. I don't want anything that's causing the work of the flesh to be manifest. That does not honor you, that, is, that does not glorify you. I don't want to be elevated, God. You be elevated in my life. Just talk to the Lord. Let's tell him. Let's speak to him as he prompts you. Father God, even as we, Lord, um, come to you, draw near to you, Lord, we are so captivated by the beauty of your holiness, God, uh, of who you are, Lord. Lord, you've been so patient with us, God, and uh, God, patient to the point of just tolerating us, God, and, and Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy today, and Lord, we, Lord, even as we see these things, God, see these uh, things that you've put Lord, that you've come to, um, to, to lay the axe to the root of it, the source of it. And Lord, we, we just open our hearts, open our lives and say, Lord, come. You have the right of way. Work in our hearts, God. And today we choose to give up, reject, even at the, th at the level of our motives, at the level of our thoughts, and at the level of our actions, we choose to put off these things. We choose to take on the pure, the holy, the righteous, the promptings of the Holy Spirit, the thoughts of God, the desires of God, which leads us to life and more life. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you're drawing us today, even now, with your love, Father God. Yeah, Lord. We thank you. And Lord, we pray that each of these things, Lord, will be dealt with even now, God. And on an ongoing, Lord, daily basis, Lord, that we'll remember that these things belong on the cross, that these things need to be put to death, God. Purify our heart, Lord. Purify our thoughts, our motives, our desires, God, our wants, oh God. Our ambitions in ministry, God, purify, O oh God, refine it, God, and may we bring glory to your name as individuals and collectively as the body. And let your name alone 
be glorified, God, for you are the preeminent one. And Lord, all glory and all honor, Lord, belongs to you and you alone. We thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, let me just...